Now let's look at the AEC workflow for getting our projects out of Cinema 4D. I've gone ahead and I've rendered this scene to the desktop and now I just want to save an After Effects compositing file. So you can make sure that you have, well if you have this on it will save it when you actually render. We're doing it afterwards so just make sure we've got the target application is After Effects and include 3D data is checked on. Then we can just press this button at the bottom and save the file and I'm going to put it on my desktop right next to my folder. You can put it inside the folder but for ease of finding it I'm just going to put it right next to it. So we can save it here and then we'll open it up in After Effects. So we can import this AEC file into After Effects. We can just double click in here and select the file that we saved. We'll choose open. And now that's going to bring in the passes we've rendered out and organize them into folders. So we have the diffuse, the reflection, and the shadow. And these are all the passes which make up the beauty pass and they have been composited into this composition. If we click and open it up, you can see. And if I press F4, you can see that the blending mode has been set up correctly. So the reflection is adding on top of the shadow and the shadows are then multiplying on top of the diffuse. And this is what we see. We also have the 3D data from Cinema 4D, so the camera and the lights and the things we set up for ex with external compositing tags, so this screen. And if we scrub through, we have this null object as well, which is where we can place something such as a text um, or anything really, and it will work in 3D space. One thing we need to set up is the, the project properly. We we're working in linear space in Cinema 4D, so we need to come in here to our project settings, make sure we're working in 16-bit and choose sRGB and then linearize the working space. You can't see it, but there is a button to OK all this off screen. So that's changed our colors a bit and generally it's for the better. Getting something strange here and I think it's due to the way the alpha channel was exported. If I just look through some of the other passes we've got, it's something that's actually embedded in the diffuse. So we can fix this, of course, and this is why we rendered out our object buffers, because if a client came along and said, that is not what I was expecting it to be, we'd be in trouble and have to re-render it again. But we've got this quick solution here. So the object buffer, as we discussed, is a matte object that we can isolate certain, certain elements with. So we've got one for this word next, and if I drag it into our composition above the diffuse, I'm going to make a just bring this out so you can see. I'm going to duplicate the diffuse. So Command D, and now we've got a copy. And what I want to do is set the luma mat to be of the object one, the object buffer. And now if I solo that layer, you can see that we have just the word next isolated. And it will be a case of simply grabbing a hue saturation effect and just rotating this around to be in the orange area, or you can change whatever color you want. So now if we unsolo that layer, we've fixed our problem and we can keep on working. So next up, we can add something to this screen and that was the idea behind this billboard thing. So if we import a video file, for example, got this H plus commercial, open that up. It's in the correct aspect ratio of our screen. So we can simply just select our screen here and then with our movie selected here, we can press Command, Alt, and forward slash, and that will swap it out, but it just needs to be scaled down now. So about 50%, I think, should do it. And there we have it. We can scrub through, and we've got our commercial playing. And of course, if we wanted to, we could also edit this beforehand, turning it into a composition. You know, we could just get to the point we're interested in, and then just trim the comp, come back out, and another way of swapping objects is if you have them both, have this selected and this selected, just hold down Alt, and then you can just drop that on. And then we've got our edited shots in there. We can always go back into that composition now and make additional changes if we'd like. So the next up, we could show you how this works. And this is this details null that we created. So my idea behind that would be to maybe add some text. So we can just choose layer, new text. I can just type H plus sport and it's in white. So what we can do is just make it a 3D layer. Just press F4 to bring up here and we can then just click here. 
use the pick whip to parent it to the null. The null is over here, so we just need to then just, it's 50 by 50. So if we want it in the center, we just move our position of the sport over to 55, 50, and just check that there's no rotation on there. I'm just pressing R on the keyboard to reveal the rotation values, and there's, it looks all good. And then you can just simply put it into place as we scrub through, it's locked on. Another good thing about the AEC workflow, as we've seen, is we have all the different passes. So if we wanted to double up our reflections, we can do. We can just make that a lot brighter. And of course, because we've got all these layers available and it's all split out, and we want to make sure that what we've inserted is integrated, we can drop these underneath our reflection, underneath our shadow, and just here. And now you can see they're going to take on the reflections and shadows in the scene and really feel like they're integrated into the shot. So it's so powerful, it's so flexible. It's my preferred method and that's why I use the AEC workflow when I'm getting all my final renders composited in After Effects.